Hello, Humane Marketers. Sarah Znakrocha here. Welcome to another episode of the Humane Marketing Podcast, a place to be for the generation of marketers who cares. This is the show where we talk about marketing your business in a way that feels good to you, is aligned with your values, and also resonates more with your conscious customers because it's not pushy, ethical, and also beautiful. So if you're a regular here, you know that I'm organizing the conversations around the seven P's of humane marketing. And if you're new here and this is your first time, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. You may want to download your one-page marketing plan with the seven P's of humane marketing in the form of a mandala at humane.marketing forward slash one page, the number one and page. So again, humane.marketing forward slash one page. And with that, with no further ado, let's dive into today's conversation. Hi, Christina. So good to see you, speak with you for our listeners on the podcast. They won't see you, but I do, which is great. Um, so happy that we could do this interview with you. I know we had some trouble last time. We want to talk about marketing archetypes. So I think the best way is to just jump right into it. So you came up with this framework, five marketing archetypes, and I want to ask you what they are, but maybe before I do, I'd love to hear how you came up with this and you know what the research was behind it and just kind of like why come up with five marketing archetypes? So tell us a little <laughs> bit about you and, and your journey to those archetypes. So I was in the thick of doing a field study where I had 40 people in five countries testing a mindset tool, you know, that I thought this will have nothing to do with marketing, but it turns out that when I heard back from people, several of them were business owners. And I'll just share with you what the mindset tool is. It's called the generosity practice. It's something I developed in the early 2000s. And it basically puts you in a contribution mindset, right? Where you're just on fire to help people. Even if you've been rejected 10 times, even if people are being rude, you're just like, wow, I just love helping people. You know, <laughs> like a ninja of service. It's awesome. So what I heard back from the, a lot of the business owners was, you know, okay, so this is helping me in my regular life, but as a business owner, I am much more consistent with getting my message out there. I'm not as shy. I'm much more excited to just connect with people in general. So I'm marketing more consistently just overall. Also at the negotiating table, when there's a lot of money on the table, I just sit quietly and listen. I'm not there to prove anything. I'm not there to like push for the sale. I just accurately diagnose who's across from me and then offer them what they need. And nine times out of 10, it's, it's a yes. So that was a turning point for me. I realized that I could probably use this work for marketing or for business owners in some way. I didn't know how. So then I actually conducted another field study, which was basically coming up with a marketing plan for 40 entrepreneurs. And I used my method, like a deeper level of it to help them focus their message and help them simplify. Like just how do you even choose what you're gonna do in your marketing? That's a huge decision, right? So I wanted to help them. It was one big test. And what I realized when I did the 40 plans in a row that every single person that went through my process had this beautiful why, a why of like, this is how I absolutely love helping humans. And that my mind saw archetypes with that right? Like one woman who was a real estate agent, she was this master of ceremonies. She always likes to lift the whole thing up and go big and like, you know, be this huge presence and she's magnetic. So that was her archetype. And we built her messaging and her strategy around that. Another one was more of what I call now an adventure guide. Somebody who's like, okay, you know, I'm an interior designer and yes, I could show you all the beautiful things, but let's get on a horseback and go have an adventure and I'll tell you what's possible. And that was her energy. So I saw her as an adventure guide archetype and all these started popping up and it was just fun to like, look at marketing from a little bit more personal depth way. Like this person has a message. This person has a why they love helping people forget their expertise for a second, but they just love helping people in this particular way. And then when you have 40, 
you can actually look for patterns. And I, you know, it's not a big number, but there were patterns and I found five really strong categories. And those are the categories I'm gonna share with you today. Developed an assessment around it. And, you know, I've been using them for six years and they've held like they're sort of a foundation point for what I do. Wonderful. Yeah. Because on the Humane Marketing Podcast and just kind of in general, people who, who follow my work, we, we love anything uh, that is like an assessment or personality <laughs> quiz or anything like that. It's part of the personal power P because it helps us understand who we are so that we can then market from that place of who we are. And it really sounds like that's what you have developed another you know assessment that we could refer to our episode we're actually featuring it under the p of partnership because you told me that you really help people see marketing as a partnership with their wider community i'd love for you to explain a little bit more about that statement and then we go into the five uh, archetypes so when somebody, there's a few different ways to approach marketing, right? I think one of the natural ways is to say to yourself, okay, I need clients. I need to look impressive and I need to somehow stay consistent. So that people will be like, oh, I want to work with that life coach. Oh, I want to work with that therapist or whoever it's going to be, whoever, whatever kind of expert you are. And so that can very quickly become mechanical where you're just like churning it out. Like, I just got to do this message and you're not really in it. You're just sort of pumping it out. And so, and I don't really call that being a partner to your community. What makes you a partner to, to your wider community is when in your messaging and even in your strategy decision, the fact that you might do a podcast rather than an event series, all of that can be infused with your why. Like you're showing your care through your message. I'll give you one example. So. I'm working with a um, promotions expert right now. She is somebody who has like tens of thousands of stuff of like trinket, not trinkets, but like items that you can use for your clients to really stand out. And, you know, there's sort of a negative uh, spin on promotional items because a lot of times it's just a bunch of plastic going out to the world, right? So like, how do you, how do you create your marketing as a partner with your wider community with that kind of business? Mm -hmm. So we identified her archetype as she's this like comfy couch queen. She's like got this magnetic vibration of like, this is my world. Come and visit me. Also, I love just, you know, sitting on a couch metaphorically or otherwise, and just like getting to the heart of it. Right. And looking at things differently and being curious and like, she could just do all that all day long. So we created a message from that. We're like, okay, what do you want to say as a partner to your community? Well, I want to say, hey, I want to celebrate all the leaders in my community. And at the same time, share with you how you can stand out with promotional items so that it's not one big advertisement. It's like a really helpful, like I'm going to feature leaders while I'm also educating you about the promotional items. So that's her being that comfy couch queen. <laughs> and then the way she's doing that is a podcast. And it's this kind of community celebration podcast with a little bit of education woven in there that all flows from her why. And so every single facet of her marketing now shows that, oh my gosh, like she just cares about us. Anyone who listens to it, anyone she gives the link to like, oh, are you struggling with this? Let me help you. I have like a podcast for, her. I mean, you probably do this all the time, Sarah, because you do very specific topics. So I just want to show that like you can take your why and weave it into every single thing. And then anytime you're touching out to your community, they feel your care. It yeah. just needs to start from the beginning. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I, I love this, how you explain the partnership piece, because it, it, it is some, it's kind of like this word where like, oh, that sounds like some legal agreement maybe, or something very <laughs> abstract. Right. And so when you share it that way, it's like, oh yeah. I do care for my clients. I do care for my community and it's in marketing. Well, it's all about sharing that you care and, and, and yeah, walking your talk. And it really sounds like your couch queen is, is doing a, a great job at that. I love that. And, and, and then of I'll, course, yeah, bringing yeah, in the just, why as well. Right. That's right. Crazy. And I just want to add something else if you, because I think it matters to your audience, as far as like, I'm going to call them transformational professionals, right? Like mm -hmm. anyone who's really good at what they do and they're changing lives. 
Right. That's what I call you. So I set the bar high for people like, you know, transformational professionals that you need to change lives when you get out there. Right. You need to actually make a difference in people's lives when you're marketing, not just phoning it in and having an accurate message about what you do. It needs to be like, whoa, like that's compelling. And I just want to know more. And that's because you're actually changing lives right out of the gate. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just want yeah. to add that. No, that's great. Yeah. I, I feel like for, if I draw the parallel, because that's kind of what we're doing. We're both marketers and we're learning from each other. And so if I look at the way I talk about it, this is the worldview. I talk about sharing our worldview and yes, that we care about our clients, but that we also care about the bigger picture. So, you know, the planet or yet, like you said, changing the world. So, so really showing that it's, yes, it's about us and yes, it's about the transaction and the transformation, but it's also about the bigger picture um, as well. Yeah. So share those five archetypes with us, Christine. All right, let's do it. <laughs> and then we can have the conversation about yours if you want yeah. to, or mine or both. Um, Definitely. Okay. So th the first one is nurture. You know, you're a nurture when you absolutely love making it warm and fuzzy for everyone else. And your deep why is making it safe for others to thrive. That is a nurture. Adventure guides are the people. And again, I love starting with the dead giveaway. Dead giveaway for adventure guides is you're kind of impatient for people to just go for it already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so your deep why is you want to, you see what's possible for other people, their big goals, and you empower them to get there by going for it yourself. So you're the one who gets people into action. The door openers are those who just Okay. Dead giveaway here is you have 50 ideas at any given moment that could help people. There's like, you have lots of perspectives and your deep why is there are so many possibilities in perception, just perception, just in how you look at things. So I, I like to call door openers a diamond mind because they just see things from so many different facets. Mm. Uh, steady presences uh, dead giveaway is that you really avoid marketing because you don't like getting out there and being super charismatic and you think that you should be, that's also a dead giveaway. So your deep why as a steady presence is you assure people that they have what it need, what it takes to move forward. And you're the one with the resources, expertise, and people to make that happen. Mm -hmm. You're a celebrator, our last category, completely different energy. Dead giveaway is if you're in a boring, dry situation, you're like, let's give this some life. This is like Jonathan Van Ness on Queer Eye. Are you with me? <laughs> that guy, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's like super flamboyant. Anyway, so your deep why is bringing the good life to others. You want to bring the good life to others and you do it with your own natural flair, whether it's humor, fun, design sense, who knows? Right. So okay. kind of bringing beauty and, and yeah, just kind of like a positive vibe to, to your audience or to your marketing. Yeah. Nice. I, I took some notes. So I have them all down. Nurture, door opener, steady presence. I'm missing one. Celebration. Adventure. Guide? adventure yeah. Adventure guides. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so good. I took the quiz. Maybe I should have not taken the quiz and then just <laughs> kind of guessed which one I was, but I did take your assessment. So that's at innate marketing genius forward slash assessment. So our listeners can take it as well. And drum roll. I'm a nurturer and a door opener. I was actually ending up with two results, I guess, because the that yeah. is common. Yep. That is common. Yeah. So, and if I were to ask you, Sarah, which one seems more prominent, if there is one mm. you lean towards one? Yeah, I, I would definitely say the nurture is, is kind of where I feel like, yeah, I'm most at home. I do like the, uh, the, di what did you say? The diamond? Yeah. The diamond mind. Mind. Yeah. yeah. The door that resonates as well, but I do, I, I call myself the mama bear of the humane marketing circle. So really this image of the mama bear uh, really resonates with me. I feel like, you know, come in, come in, I'll keep you safe and I'll host the space. And, and so that, yeah, that is definitely me, but, but then some of the other ones actually resonate as well. Me, Definitely not the last one, the celebratory kind of aspect. That's, that's not me. I do have 
I do feel like there's a lot of steady presences in the audience, in our listeners, you know, the people who are like, oh, I just can't be bothered with the marketing shoulds. And, and so I like what you said about it. And maybe you can repeat that, um, what their role is in marketing. Totally. And I'm actually going to be holding a special workshop just for steady presences for that very reason. Mm -hmm. I do want to say before I answer that, I'm also a nurturer with a side of door opener. So okay. <laughs> like there we are <laughs> on that level. And for me, I'm a nurturer of great ideas in others. That's how that all kind of comes together. Like if right. you came up to me after a talk or something and said, oh, I just got all these, you know, new perspectives and like I made it safe for you to go there when I give my talk. And then right. I would just start crying. Cause I'm like, oh, that's my mission. Thank you. You know, <laughs> anyway. yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as steady presences, one thing that I've noticed is incredibly powerful. Like when I watch a steady presence geek out, like really geek out about something I have no interest in somehow. And this is just, you know, one person saying it, but I've been watching this for years each time there's something riveting about watching a steady presence go into the depth of what they know and what they do. Like I watched one guy give a talk about auto and home insurance, <laughs> something that I have no special interest in, but I just couldn't stop watching him and listening. And it was just, why am I suddenly riveted to this particular person? And I've always been interested in that. Like, you know, let's say Sarah, you talk about you know, purpose and marketing and all kinds of rich, juicy topics. But if another person talked about it, who might have a very different why than you, then no one would be interested. Like that happens all the time. And so that's sort of why I feel like the archetypes are really helpful because it explains the intangible thing that's happening mm. behind all the messaging. Why am I riveted to you, but not riveted to this other person who's basically telling me a similar message, but I just don't feel anything compelling going on over there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm always like looking for. Anyway, so for steady presence, it is really powerful for you to be a pillar, right? Like we lean on you to be that steady presence. It's such a gift. And you typically have the deep resources, deep expertise, deep network. And all you have to do in your marketing, I'm just going to give you a nugget right now is to go deep into one of those things and then share about it right? So if you're some kind of a health and wellness professional, and you're going to a program like a conference, and you're learning something, then like you could just share a really juicy, deep nugget or an article or whatever, that shows the riches and the depth and the deliciousness of what you're learning. And don't worry that we even understand a word of what you're just right. Like it's not that doesn't matter. What matters is you're showing us how much you know. And that's what brings us two years. Like, oh my gosh, she just knows so much about herbs. This is crazy. Like I'll never, I don't need to know about Yara root, but she certainly does. And oh my gosh, I can't wait to see her because she's just the queen of knowledge. Mm. Um, and when you display it that way, it's very generous to your audience. I love saying that it's very generous to your audience. Don't worry if we keep up with you. I have an attorney who's like an HR labor law attorney. She sends out these really long, you know, in marketing, you're supposed to keep things short, really long in-depth newsletters and they're gorgeous. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is so helpful to understand, especially around COVID, all the changing labor laws. And it really educated her audience. Like this is when you need to pick up the phone and call me. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the message underneath the message is look how much she knows. She's on top of it. She's like so helpful. She's a great educator. I want to work with her. Right. So that's one thing is sharing the depth of your stuff, um, expertise, resources, people. The other thing I, I, that's really compelling is if you're involved as a leader in your community, like you're on a board, you're doing a volunteer thing, like whatever you do, you're raising money that even if, if it has nothing to do with what you actually do in your work, share about that. The reason it is compelling for you is that you are a pillar and you're acting like one. It just tells us we can lean on you even more than we already are. And that's why we hire you. I find it so interesting that what you're talking about, I'm sure for a lot of people, they're like, but that's not marketing. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're trying to say, right? It's like, well, actually you need to, in your mind, and I often find like it's a mindset thing, especially for steady presences, probably 
it's a mindset thing because the, the minute you tell people to do marketing, to market their business, they get into this frozen mode and they feel like I have not, I don't know how, I don't have anything to say. But when you give them permission, like you just said, well, just share in depth about what it is you know, your knowledge, your expertise, then it's like, oh, I can do that. You know, I have lots of things to share. But it, it's like this mindset thing that you have to somehow switch on where you're like, this is marketing. Believe me, you're doing marketing right there. Well, I always ask, you know, are you, do you consider yourself to be a compelling expert of what you do? Because when you're a compelling expert, that just means that, you know, you're standing out from the crowd. Uh, you're, you're magnetizing in some way, some way, and you obviously know your stuff. So right. if you feel like you are being a compelling expert and I mean, sometimes people don't want to be a compelling expert because it's a little bit, it's down the path. I think when not everyone is ready to really stand out like that, I respect that, right? We are all on our trajectory, but if somebody wants to be that, I say, is, wouldn't it be fantastic to be that? Like who cares about how much you hate marketing? I work with tons of people who just like, I hate marketing and, but they get past it when they realize how much how much service they can offer, mm -hmm. you know, like, and also how energizing it can be. Cause here's the other thing, like when you're operating from your why it's actually energizing the comfy couch queen is doing her podcast. And every single time she does, she's got way more energy to devote to all the rest of her work for that day. That's the kind of marketing I want people to have. Yeah. Yeah, no, you totally. Know. It reminds me, I think I heard you say on another podcast or somewhere, you talk about the marketing brain and the client service brain. <laughs> and I think I love that. And people will really get this visual. So what are they and what's the difference between the two? Yeah. So marketing is innately expansive. Like you just want to go out and connect out with more and more people. So it's always that can get grabby and greedy. And it's like, oh, I have to do this app or I have to do this strategy or like, I mean, I'm a marketing professional that helps people with this every single day. And I wrestle with it. Like, should I be on clubhouse clubhouse has gotten a little quieter now, but like, there's always something, you know, doing the Instagram reels or whatever everybody's up to pressure, pressure, pressure to just. Push. So think about like from that mind frame, what kind of choices you're going to make. Okay. So that's one, the client, the client service mindset is where you're really in touch with the value, the actual value that you provide your clients. So one way to tune into that is to co contemplate five representative clients and just really get curious about the kind of value you provide them and then create your marketing after you've really gotten clear about that. Like, what is it they truly needed from you? Even if they might've said they wanted this over here, when you really dug in, you're like, this is actually what they need. So that's what I'm going to talk about in my marketing. Right. So to me, those mindsets are worlds apart. Yeah. Yeah. And yet what we often see out there is targeted towards the marketing brain, you know, <laughs> the latest things you need to have and the latest platforms you need to be on all these marketing shoulds that were constantly, yeah, kind of being invited to look at. And, and yet, if we are in the service brain, we're actually much more in connection and marketing is connection. So we're much more in connection with our ideal clients. That's so true. I want to go back to the nurture and door opener. So once I do the assessment, right? I know, okay, this is my archetype. What does that mean for me? What do I do with this information? How can I come up with a strategy from those you know, archetypes one or two, whatever comes out. Yes. So first of all, assessments are not perfect. So I just want to put that in there. And one, one thing that I always invite people to do is, you know, you can always sign up to hang out with me for 30 minutes and we can really, cause I muscle test people on there and I could do it with you just to double check, but I muscle test to make sure that we've landed on the right one. That's a thing. But I mean, you're anyone who's listening to this probably has a lot of exploration of their own intuition. So like intuit it for yourself now that you've heard all five types, right? Like, which, so, but then when you um, take the assessment, I have created these five love letters or whatever you want to call them about like celebrating what it means to be a nurturer and a door opener. And one mm -hmm. of those invites 
you to um, have like a, you know, what do you even call it? Like a workbook to take the nurture energy and put it into action, like really start creating messaging out of that place. And also looking at, you know, what's a brand like for nurtures. I think it's been a long time since I put the report together, but I think I said Airbnb and, you know, Airbnb just makes it, it's very cozy. Like it just makes everybody comfortable, whatever, like some kind of reference like that. So mm -hmm. that's another step. Um, as far as landing on a strategy, you know, that is the work that I do with clients in my compelling expert program. It's a four month program. I also have a, because I've been in business for um, six years doing this. I created like a self-study course called One Voice, One Strategy. And that, you know, if you're a self-studier, not everybody is, you can just go and knock that one out. But let me just share with you how I help people determine their strategy. Like, you know, you're a nurturer with a side of door opener. So from that, I also want to know how you naturally connect with people right? Like, are you the one that loves to get up on stage and wow people, you know, from wow the audience? Are you the one that loves small format workshops or um, you love being on camera? Or, I mean, there's just like lots of different ways to connect. And what are your business needs? Do you need to grow your list? Do you need to just, you know, I have several clients that they're doing fine, but they just need a refresh. Like they're at a plateau. So, you know, this is a really great like refueler. And that's true for a couple of podcast people that I have, like they're doing fantastic. They're great marketers, but it's like they're bored. So mm, let's, yeah. you know, give it some life. And so business needs and your, your archetype and your, the way that you naturally connect with people. So then I'll, I'll sit down with somebody and we'll chat about it for 90 minutes and really go deep. Like let's, because what inevitably happens is there's one beautiful way for you to be out in public that bubbles to the surface. Like when I first started doing this, I'm like, I'm just making this up as I go along. I'm just hoping that every client I have lands on one strategy. And I just would sort of sweat and be really nervous with all my first clients, <laughs> but it worked every time, hmm. every time. So maybe the most important thing I can impart is that believe that you have a really powerful core strategy that could be the engine of everything else. That's sort of like part two of my message. It's like, you've got this why it's your marketing archetype, but also you have the, like for me right now it's talks and when it's in person, nothing better than that. Right. So totally excited for things to start opening up again. And then, you know, I would call podcasts a sort of subcategory of talks so, but for some people it's, let's do, you know, an event series and have a bunch of gatherings that are strategic and it just depends. And maybe it's time for you to write your book. That's another, you know, and by the way, I cannot wait to read your mark, your, your marketing book. Like I'm like, I, because you and I are so similar <laughs> in our approach and I have not written my marketing book yet. I wrote my mindset book, but not my marketing book. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally have to <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it is really amazing. I was just going to say before you said that comment about the book and how we're similar. It's amazing that what you are talking about, I'm talking about in the in the frame of the mar marketing superpower, the gentle marketing superpower. It's that kind of overlap between yes, your people, what you your personal preference, and then the 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 connection where do you want to hang out right and and, and it, it it really gives you the permission to do what feels good to you i think that is the biggest takeaway from all of this to do what feels good and not to follow all the gurus latest strategy or what they say they have to, you have to do right and and and, and i think that is just so powerful but it's also so such a big relief when you can say I can just focus on one thing that I'm already good at and that I can get better and better at it and that will be enough I think there's and, just a, such a big relief with that and another another caveat to that yes it's something you're good at but I also try to give my clients that edge right like the the thing that's going to push them Right. So, you know, I worked with a life coach who she's like, well, I used to help other speakers with their things. And I'm like, hon, it's time for you to be a speaker. Like right. she kept saying, those people are the speakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. like, and I just knew yeah. just from, you know, working deeply with her, it's your turn. 
Right. And that was, you wouldn't say, oh, that's my strength and I'm great at it, but it was her comfort edge and she knocked it out of the park. Mm, yeah. So that's, that's another thing. Like, I think that keeps us interested, right? You know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's another full-time job. This is the kind of strategy where like you give a lot of, you give a lot of love in the beginning just to develop the, you know, the foundation, whether it's your talk or whatever. And then it just pays dividends mm. for years. Yeah. yeah. If you do it right. No, totally. Yeah. yeah. There's another thing I want to talk to you about, because I think we have that in common as well. Um, the bringing back the humanity to marketing. So how do you talk about it with your clients, the whole bringing back the human aspect? To it? Yeah. And it's like, you have your book marketing, like we're human. My talk, my signature talk is marketing for humans, bringing the human back into marketing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. And pretty much it's, it's the conversation you and I are having right now. I actually have it as an intro course called the three secrets to getting great clients by being you. And so the first one is know your why. The second one is find the solid strategy. That's going to be your engine and your fuel. And then the third one, which I'll say now, cause that's kind of the missing piece is the mindset piece, the, mm. the contribution mindset. So just to be really specific about that. And I've, I've just wrote a book last year. It's called the generosity practice. I didn't think I could actually teach it on paper. It took me so long to really mm -hmm. just sit down and knock that out. Like it was a two-year process, but anyway, this is about like, okay, Sarah, if right now you were to wander around your town where you live or your beautiful city, because I know where you live <laughs> and you could offer every stranger the most, just a gift that would delight you. Like I actually remember being in Lausanne and there's this place there was, this is like 25 years ago. There was a place that was like a little cafe that had the richest, almost like pudding, like hot Next chocolate. To the cathedral. I know and the place. You really exactly. have to climb up there to get it. It is like, I've never forgotten that. It's been so many years since I had that. And I was like, if I were there and I were you, if I could give that to every stranger, that would delight me and probably make them happy. So mm. if I were to ask you, what would be your version of that? To mm. give to would it have to be something like tangible or intangible? No, no. It could okay. be, and it has nothing to do with your real capacity to give it. It's just something in your own heart that would delight you. Right. Yeah. If I think about my work, it would definitely be this permission piece. I feel like that's the biggest feedback I get from the book is people reading my book saying, thank you. Thank you for the permission to do marketing. Like it feels good to me. So it okay. would be going around, handing out permission slips saying you can do it <laughs> however you want. And then that goes beyond marketing. I think it, just, it really just goes with business, be who you are in business. Yeah. Yeah. So just to take that up a notch, like what color would the permission slip be? Mm, it would be uh, emerald green. Ooh. And if you were to put it like in a little cool envelope to make it a little more special like maybe what would that look like I think it would be a gold envelope like really thick paper probably like one of these old seals on it <laughs> like, awesome. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so seal. Wh where I'm taking this with you Sarah is that you know, you can go into a space of delight. Like you can even just leave the, well, this is my mission in life and I'm here to bring permission to everyone. And that's what they love from me. Like there's also a space for you to be like, oh, I get to give people like these cool gold envelopes with like the emerald green inside. And this is going to be awesome. So if you take that out to the outermost limits, um, that's the essence of the practice. Like what feels good to offer to life today? Mm -hmm. And it really allows you the space to step back from your work and all of the shoulds and all the expectations and just decide, I would love to be an offering in this way today. And you could, there's so many ways to go at it, right? You can do it what, what we just did. You can also think of a person that you love in your life and like what you would love to offer them. You can think about like what you'd love to offer the whole wide world. And then the deepest level of the practice is, let me just quiet my mind. And this is where just sitting for 10 minutes is really powerful. You just sit with, for 10 minutes, you imagine yourself in this glorious place that makes you feel connected. And then you just wait in the unknown for like the gift, right? Like the, and my experience of this is things drop in from 
I'm going to call it grace, you know, from all of life, from higher intelligence. And it just like drops and you're there to discern, like, is this the gift or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, no. And that, that discerning process is incredibly important anyway. And then you land it. And a lot of times people just get tears or you're just like, oh my gosh, this is a different day. But even just for imagining what I could give to all of life today. And then you see yourself offering it. And it's like, oh my God, what was bothering me? I forget because this is so awesome. Like I got the rest of my day, like handled. So mm -hmm. you can feel that that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what helps you take rejection and not stop. The subtitle to my book is 40 days to unstoppable. And that's for a reason because it makes you unstoppable. You're like, I love helping people. So that's the third piece that makes everything more human is to take mm. control of your mindset and choose one of contribution. Yeah. And what are the two others again? Know your why. So that's oh, the marketing yeah. archetype. And then yeah. pick the solid strategy that mm. like really is your, mm. your jam. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. I love that. And it, in a way it's like, I love how you wrote the mindset book first, and then maybe that will, you know, lead into the, the marketing book, because I, I feel like I feel the same about the marketing book. It then led to the sales book, right? I have marketing, like we're human and then people ask me, well, what about selling? And so I had to give myself permission to write the selling, like we're human book first, because I thought, well, I'm not a salesperson. So who am I to write that? So, you know, writing a book is, is a journey and it's a transformation by itself. So I can't wait to find out more about your book and then hopefully uh, you'll write the marketing book too. <laughs> oh, it's, it's out there. Just, it's out there, it's, right? It's percolating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Christina. We'll make sure that we link to the book and your website and everything in the, in the show notes. Is there any other link you would like? Well, the, the assessment link, maybe just share that one again. Yeah. So that's innatemarketinggenius.com slash assessment. That will Wonderful. get you there. Innate is I N N A T E. Innate. Wonderful. <laughs> Marketing genius. Yeah. I always have one last question, and that is what are you grateful for today or this week, Christina? Mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for a group of people. Today, it was 32 of them that go into the ocean with me on Wednesdays mm -hmm. and Fridays. That's and it was so nice. 39 degrees in the water this morning. So we're just, we're there together suffering for two minutes and I, I just adore them all. 39, that must be like two degrees Celsius or something. Pretty much. They're really cold. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's been a delight. Yeah. I appreciate being here. Thanks so much for watching and being part of a generation of marketers who cares for yourself for your clients and for the planet. We really are change makers before we are marketers. So go ahead, be the change you want to see in the world. And I hope to see you again next week. Take care.